A single idea in the 1970s changed everything about how we connect. It wasn't Wi-Fi or even the internet. It was Ethernet. And here is why you should care. In today's world, we take fast internet for granted, and I know I do. But in 1973, computers were like remote islands that couldn't talk to each other, and that was not gonna work. But then at Xerox Park in Palo Alto, California, one engineer had a vision. What if computers could instantly communicate over a shared system. This vision became Ethernet, the backbone of modern connectivity. Without Ethernet, there would be no streaming, no online gaming, no cloud computing, no AI, and definitely no YouTube. So where did this all begin? This is the amazing story of how Ethernet was born. Well, this story begins in 1973 with Bob Metcalf and his team at Xerox Park Research Center. They were looking for a way for computers to share data fast and reliably. And at that time, they were inspired by AlohaNet, a Hawaiian radio-based network that sent data packets over the air. And Bob had a great idea. What if we used wires instead of radio signals, which means faster, more reliable, and less interference? Simply brilliant. And the very first development of Ethernet was created. The first versions of Ethernet used very thick coax cables and ran at 2.94 megabits per second, which is very slow by today's standards, but groundbreaking back then. And this cable was nicknamed ThickNet, which was about the width of your thumb. And the first versions were painted bright yellow so technicians could find it easily in ceilings and on floors. And just a fun fact, ThickNet required a vampire tap. And no, we are not killing any vampires. A vampire tap is a literal spike piercing the cable to connect the computers. But Bob and his team soon realized that ThickNet had some problems. <laughs> Boy. It was expensive, it was hard to install, and if one computer went down on the network, sometimes the whole network would crash. And this brought us Thin Ethernet or ThinNet. This cable was thinner, cheaper, and more flexible. And best of all, it was easier to install. By 1980, the 10 megabits per second Ethernet standard was born. And by 1985, Category 1, or Cat 1, was implemented using twisted pair copper cables. And making the switch from coax cable to copper cable was a big deal. Because coax cable is bulky and heavy and harder to work with. And twisted pair copper cables are much lighter, thinner, and easier to work with. And by 1986, Starland, the first twisted pair cable running at one megabits per second was officially standardized. And by 1991, the EIA TIA 568 standard was released, providing the foundational requirements for structured cabling systems, which included CAT3. And by 1995, the 100 base TX standard was ratified and the world of networking changed forever. Businesses, universities, hospitals, and homes adopted Ethernet at a massive scale. Uh, I'm here to report uh, that the most important new fact about the human condition is that we are now all suddenly connected. Uh, about five billion of us are connected, two thirds of the human race. And we've all joined the network since October 29th, 1969, when the, the internet first started shipping packets. So the most important fact is we are now connected. We are suddenly connected. That is having been connected since the, since 69, that's pretty fast. And since then, we've installed tens of millions of miles of ethernet cables. So now we're gonna dig in to twisted pair cables. All Ethernet cables from CAT5e to CAT8 share several core characteristics that define them as twisted pair network cables. They are all designed to transmit data signals and are used to connect devices on a local area network or in LAN, such as computers, routers, and switches. At their most basic level, all of these Ethernet cables consist of four twisted pairs of copper wires. This twisting is a fundamental design feature that helps reduce crosstalk which is the interference or bleeding of signals between adjacent wire pairs. And the tighter the twist, the better the performance. The standard for all of these cables is the RJ45 connector, with the exception of some older or specialized cables like CAT7 and CAT8, which may use different connectors. But these connectors still operate as an RJ45 connector. This is the plastic plug at the end of the cable 
that snaps into an Ethernet port. A key feature of all Ethernet cables is backwards compatibility. A newer category cable, like CAT8, can be used with a device designed for an older category, like CAT5e or CAT6. But the network's performance will be limited to the capabilities of the slowest component. All these cables are classified into categories, also known as CAT, which are established by industry standards, like the TIA EIA. The higher the number, the more recent the standard, and typically the better the performance in terms of speed and bandwidth. Each category cable has speed and distance limitations. While the specific distances and speeds vary significantly between categories, all copper Ethernet cables have a maximum effective length over which they can reliably transmit data at the rated speed. For most categories, this is 100 meters or 328 feet. Though high-speed cables like CAT8 are limited to much shorter distances, like 30 meters. So where did the name Ethernet come from? The name Ethernet came from the concept of data moving through a shared medium like the ether in physics. But here's the twist. While Wi-Fi steals the spotlight today, especially with smartphones and laptops, Ethernet is still the MVP. And what it's doing now and well into the future will blow your mind. So stick around. So let's talk about the evolution of Ethernet. Over the decades, Ethernet kept leveling up. From fast Ethernet at 100 megabits per second in the 90s, and then in the early 2000s, we had gigabit Ethernet. And then a few years later, we hit 10 gigabit Ethernet. And now we're at 40 plus gigabit Ethernet, which is mainly used for massive data centers and AI supercomputers. It's really insane. And each of these upgrades opened the doors to streaming, online gaming, cloud computing, AI, and much more. And all of those applications wouldn't work without Ethernet. And even today, most of the internet runs on Ethernet. And it's the backbone of most businesses and home networks. So why should we care about Ethernet? Ethernet isn't just a relic. It powers your life right now. We're talking about Netflix, smart homes, game servers, cloud storage, AI systems like ChatGPT, and they all benefit from Ethernet. And the next chapter is terabit Ethernet. That's right, terabit. Terabit Ethernet will bring instant downloads, low latency VR, and real-time AI learning. Things are heating up and it's all because of Bob Metcalf. High five. Bob Metcalf's work earned him the IEEE Medal of Honor, the National Medal of Technology and Innovation, and in 2023, the Turing Award, the highest honor in computer science. High five. So next time you plug in an ethernet cable, remember you're holding a piece of tech history that keeps evolving just like my YouTube channel. So guys and gals, make sure to like, share, subscribe, and comment. And if you want free tech gear and free tech support, become a member of the Ultimate Tech Hub family. Don't miss out because all the cool kids are doing it. And with that, I'll see you guys in the next video. High five. Peace.